Do we start? No, no, wait. Now, action! Far out in the ocean. I thought it was the fanfare first. Oh yeah, start again, just... Wait, I have to restart the video first. Ugh, this fucking... No fucking please! Oh, for God's sake. And no taking the Lord's name in vain either. I said for God's sake. Was that a joke? Yeah. Funny, dear. Almost as funny as your grandmother pretending to be religious. Oh, you! Can we please? Right, right. Three, two, one, action! Far out in the ocean, or as it is also known, the suburbs near the ocean, stands the castle, commonly called the duplex, of the Sea King. The Sea King had been a widower for many years, but his aged mother... <coughs> his aged mother, while she didn't exactly keep house for him, helped out whenever she wasn't busy or at the jewelry fair. She... She was a very wise woman and exceedingly proud of her high standing in the world of jewelry making. On that account, she was always wore 12 oysters on her tail, otherwise known as necklaces on her neck. It's called marketing, dear. Grandma, it's my turn. Here, take this. say the Sea King has many as six mermaids as his daughters, and according to Disney, even seven. But in our tale, there are only two. And two is plenty, thank you very much. The elder daughter swam fast in straight lines and always knew where she was going, and could blow any old seashell into submission to create the sweetest melody. If the elder sister were an ocean, she would be the sea at dawn, calm and unbroken with the shimmer of the sun upon her. The younger sister also swam fast, but rarely in straight lines, and she sometimes got lost. However, it was said that she had the strongest voice across the seven seas and loved using it to tell stories and sing songs. If the younger sister were an ocean, she'd be of the changeable variety, the rip tides constantly pulling her in all the directions and always with the threat of an imminent storm. <laughs> That's fine, it fits, doesn't it? The ocean, also known as a suburb near the ocean, was not just a pretty place, void of anything scary. Nay, there were also the sea bitches. Ooh, I'm not sure about the use of nay. A little old fashioned, perhaps. Or maybe just pretentious. Do you even know what pretentious means? Do you? Do you? Adrian! When the mermaids were very little and plain mermaids. <laughs> plain mermaids. Uh, I mean, plain humans with their father in the living room. They invented the sea bitches. Partly because the littlest couldn't say witch. So she said bitch. And the sea witch was the one in, in the story who. It's, it's a, a little, little unclear, unclear where you're going, going with this. this. Maybe you should try and write a little song instead. I'm good at songs, you know. Maybe you could. Says. Maybe you could draw something. Oh, a little fish. I'm singing one. La, 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 la. The sea bitches may seem like gentle waves helping to keep you afloat at first. But in reality, they are the riptides that pull you off your feet and swim up your safe ocean in a second. They're the things that make you go from 1% mad to 95% mad. Jesus Christ. The sea bitches basically serve one purpose and one purpose only. They mess your sh selfish up. Don't think I don't know where you were going with that. School project or not, your foul mouth is breaking my heart. Selfish, selfish, you are really selfish. You should go and selfish, selfish, selfish. Because you forgot to feed the fish again. Adi, just keep going. I'll help you edit all the junk out later. Here, take the phone back. Dad, you're up. So, just out of curiosity, while we're taking this little break, where are we actually going with this? Nowhere. You never finish anything. <laughs> You lack the concentration. The drive. You've got the potential. 
But man, are you lazy. Your sister would have just done it and got it done. And everyone knows it. Dad, you know what it is. Adrian already said. It's the reimagination of the Little Mermaid into modern life for a school project. Yeah, I know. Oh, it's just... got a cramp. It doesn't matter, okay? It's a stupid idea. Stupid like me. S-H-I-T. Like me. S-H-I-T. 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 Just forget it, okay? I'm going to do something else. No, it's a great idea. Oh, go drown yourself, Anna. It's a stupid idea, and I know you think so, too. Everyone knows you're better at everything. So stop pretending like I'm any good at anything at all. It's so patronizing, and it makes me really hate you. Hey! Don't talk to your sister like that. Delete, 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 and gone. Thanks for participating and making me think there was any point whatsoever with this fish crap. If that phone is broken, don't you think for a second I'll be getting you another? The issue with being the sort of person who always does their best is that whatever you do, everybody assumes it's as good as you're going to get. You never have the excuse of, well, I wasn't really trying, because if people know you as someone who never achieves below your potential, then your so-called potential is limited to your actual results. I forgot to feed the fish again. It's not like that I don't see that the fish food is right there, or that I'm unaware that they need to eat to stay alive. And I understand it's quite simple, really. Just once a day, press the little button on this plastic thing. But I just don't. And then I put it off and put it off until all of a sudden this little button just seems like this huge, massive thing that's totally impossible. And then I just don't feed the fish. And then they die. You've got potential. You're just lazy. About a year ago, I deliberately did less than perfectly on a test. Like, a lot less than perfectly. I don't even know why. It was a bit of an experiment. I just decided not to study and go paintballing with Emmy and James instead. I even lied to Dad about it told him I'd done all my homework before I'd gone out, which was actually a ridiculous thing to do because it's not like he'd ever even ask if I'd done my homework or studied for a test. He knew I would have. A good girl measures her self-worth by her achievement. I really try, or at least I really try at the start of everything, but I'm not so good at being bored. Then I get distracted and lose focus and get lazy. But actually, I don't know if I can be all that lazy. Because I think of everything I have to do, and I want to do it. Like, there are so many things I want to do, and then I just... Stop! <laughs> <laughs> the teacher called Dad to express their worry because this just wasn't like me and had something happened at home that they should be aware of. I heard Dad laughing on the phone as they were talking about it. Well, could it be that... Geometry isn't one of Anna's natural talents. What natural talents? People say I'm naturally talented at a lot of things. You don't have any natural talents. As if geometry is anyone's natural talent. But I'm not living up to my potential. Not the creative, not the genius. No imagination. No fun. Dad did ask if I was okay because I know your grades are important to you, sweetheart. Perfection. You know, I don't 
not care about my grades. Perfection is your only hope. said, well, I did decide to go paintballing instead of studying for the test. Dad just laughed and laughed and ruffled my hair and said, don't worry, it's okay not to be good at everything. Grandma said, I know you're disappointed, but you did your best, and that's all that matters. Just try harder next time. It's like when I try to try harder. There's not just something that just gets in the way, but literally stops me from what I meant to do properly. I can read the same thing over and over and still not have any idea what it's about. It doesn't happen with things like H.C. Anderson, just less interesting things. It was this big joke for weeks and a C-plus incident until the next geometry test when I did try harder and got an A and all of a sudden my results weren't all that interesting anymore. No more phone calls home from the teachers. It's like everything is easy for her and she just does it. I'm okay with being the easy one, the quiet one, the good girl. And I really don't hate her for it at all. But sometimes I just get so frustrated and mad and it feels a bit like I'm then she's just, just there. <clears throat> Your daughter's obviously very bright. Thank you. Really funny and well liked. Nice to hear. Clearly a lot of creative potential as well, with the music and everything. Oh yes, I'm a musician, so. Oh, are you? Yeah, it's always been important to us. Good for you. Well, as I was saying, Mr. Sebastian and I, we I don't thought... play much anymore. It's I've jumped careers a bit over the years, but uh, yeah, I, I had a band. We did all right. Sorry, we're not talking about me. No. <laughs> well, there were a couple things I wanted to raise with you. Sure, sure. How much would you say you um, know about ADHD? Well, when my other daughter was in kindergarten, you know, she was bullied to bits by this little fuck. By this little kid named Philip Becker. At the time, his parents and the teacher said it was just his ADHD playing up. Well, that sounds like it wasn't handled very well, but the serial boy running him up in the classroom is quite a common image. He threw a common chair at her once. Um, it got four stitches. She's fine though, don't worry. She thought it was pretty cool. They actually started hanging out after that. She's a good girl, that one. Obviously, throwing chairs is not acceptable, nor necessarily ropes into all children with ADHD. They're not all hyperactive semi-real boys. Your point being? Well, going back to Adrian, she shows quite a few signs of inattentiveness and other That very... doesn't mean she has ADHD. Inattentiveness is usually more common in girls than hyperactivity, as you may know. She's often either just staring at the window or talking to her classmates about something entirely unrelated to the task at hand, which I'm sure you <clears throat> appreciate can be quite disruptive to Adrian as well as the others. Of course, when she does try, she has incredible focus. For example, Mr. Sebastian tells me she's always focused hard working That doesn't music. mean she has ADHD, though. But, from what I see, this focus seems to be reserved only for the subjects or projects she's very interested in, often at the expense of other work needing to be done. And even when Adrian is interested, <clears throat> it seems that she struggles to stick with one idea. And if something doesn't go right the first time, she has a hard time finding the motivation to try again before abandoning ship. And I can tell this is not necessarily what she wants to do. In she fact, doesn't have attention deficit disorder. Well, the combination of symptoms. Symptoms, everything you just described is personality. So what if she does better on the subjects that she finds entertaining? I mean, who the hell does it? And sure, she struggles on the things that she doesn't enjoy, but she knows she can do better if she just tries harder. We all make sure she knows. But she does try. She doesn't pass on things. She puts the motivation in, doesn't manage, and then hides behind jokes of, the dog ate my homework ill. We don't have a dog. <laughs> I know. How? <laughs> I'm incredibly allergic, and if you had any furry animals, I'd be in tears by now, sitting so close to you. <laughs> right. Universally applications aren't that far off. Adrian is definitely feeling the pressure. Individuals with ADHD tend to be more- Wait, 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 wait. Her grades are fine, aren't they? They are, not spectacular, as I'm sure you're aware, but she's not in danger of failing anything. 
So then what's the problem? What's her bedroom like at home? Excuse me? Because I can tell you her desk is a mess. Her backpack too. She always misses things. And others... It's a pig style, right? Because, you know, housework is unbelievably boring, as I'm sure you can agree. I can. And the tidiness gene skipped a generation as it did with me. You should see my bedroom. Hmm. That was not an invitation. I didn't think it was. Listen, thank you for telling me all this, but... I, I just don't think that a combination of letters is what Adrian needs stamped across her forehead. Well, the combination of letters might help with the writing Adrian the support she needs to achieve her academic goals. I thought that was your job. I am sorry. I'm s I know you're doing your job by telling me these things, but it's just... There's nothing wrong with Adrian. I She's didn't say there was anything wrong with her. Sorry, no. I just... It's just that Adrian doesn't have a disorder. She's just, she just needs some stimulation, you know? Don't let me keep you if you need to get going. We're running out of time anyways. Yes, well, I do sort of have to run. Oh wait, hey, before you go, if you would like Adrian to be evaluated for the purpose of a diagnosis, call these guys. They know what they're doing. Thank you very much. I'm not holding my breath. What happens before the riptide? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't think anyone could hear. It's not finished yet. It's really nice. Really? Yeah, really, really nice. Way more original than Purcell. What? Obviously, we can't do it for this next concert. It's in like a week. But maybe the next one after that? Mr. Sebastian is always saying that we should suggest things and write our own pieces and arrangements. And you haven't? No. You should write a love song. No, why would I do that? I don't know. It smells like tacos. It's not. It's chili. Even better. Until you have to wash the dishes. Oh, yeah. I'm not really into that sort of thing. Writing the songs and making up stories and things. I'm more of a make the best of what's already, what you've already got kind of gal. Apart from we were eight and you said you buried Wanda, but in reality you just flushed her down the toilet put a rock out because I was too scared to watch. But we had a whole memorial for a rock in an empty grave. That was more of a lie than a piece of fiction, and I totally paid for it when you found out. Yeah, but I was mostly mad that I hadn't got to watch the flushing. Luckily, you've got many more opportunities. <laughs> you know, if you want your fish to live longer, you should Really remember to feed them. I do feed them. Just out of regular hours. I actually don't think you're starving your fish. I feed them too. They've got short lives and short memories. They probably don't even remember if they've not eaten. Like me? <laughs> Dinner's like the one thing you never forget. Hey, I didn't mean those things I said the other day when... Me. Oh, yeah. I know, it's okay. I don't love him, by the way, Mr. Sebastian. Whatever. First of all, he is at least 32, and it's incredibly illegal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, I feel like he'd notice if I wasn't there. Do you want to add some trumpet to this? Of course I do. 
How does it go again? Okay. So the chorus is like this. Then I break and swept away. Whether it died. All my thoughts I was astray. Then I retired. I lost in the dance of the bliss. I don't know what happens with Lord of the Riptides. I know. That's okay. They're a little slightly drowned, you know. It's tricky. Explain the concept of an aneurysm to a five-year-old or a six-year-old. They just don't understand how someone could just drop down and die. Understand that people who fall in the water can drown. So it's not even a real thing. Of course, at the time, Adrian was just all upset at the fact that you didn't get to finish your ice cream, and Anna was equally more upset at the fact that I said ice cream was pistachio flavored which was disgusting apparently. Or at least it was at the time. She loves it now. And well. I don't think nothing in the world could stop them from going to play. Mermaids all the fucking time. Especially not you drowning. It's the result of bad parenting. It was easier when they were little. I can be a fun parent, jumping from game to game, playing along with all the little wins. I ran an excellent monster extermination business. There was no bed or wardrobe that I couldn't crack. By the end of it, I'm pretty sure they weren't even scared of monsters anymore. I'm pretty sure that they just woke me up because they found the whole extermination process so hilarious. How did I have the patience for all that crap? I can't even hear them when they describe their day at school. People who have it can never be successful. I haven't done too badly on the whole, though. Right? I mean... They're both great. I think they're happy enough. I would know if something was wrong, wouldn't I? Right? Now, after you died, you know, the girls, they kept asking me to play that one song. 
fishbowl song. And afterwards they would stay up all night singing that one line over and over and over again, way past their bedtime. Just two lost souls swimming in a fishbowl. Year after year. Imagination. Fast mind. Curious. Resilient. Fun. Imagination. Fast mind. Curious. Resilient. Fun. Imagination. Fast mind. Curious. Resilient. Fun. There are approximately five million unfinished ideas in here. Songs, stories, drawings. I really love notebooks when they're new. Late notebooks are like a promise. A possibility that something exciting will fill their pages. But they usually lose their charm when a few pages are filled with things you never want to revisit. And then the remaining empty pages just remind you that you never got anywhere with it. And never get anywhere with anything. Nobody makes me want to do my best as much as Mr. Sebastian. Just ask me the worst one. Nothing, nothing. And then look, <laughs> a little drawing of a fish. He's the only one who thinks my best can get better, even when I'm note perfect. He always says there's room for improvement. At first it was so frustrating, but now I can hear what he hears. And when I, when I play a bit flat or something, he gives me this look. Then he smiles when he realizes I know what I've done too. It's so embarrassing, but it pushes me to do better. When I was little, I wanted to be a mermaid. At the same time, I wanna play flat all the time, just so I can see that look. Lazy. I've been practicing so hard for our next concert. Adrian and I are doing solos and Purcell's Sound the Trumpet, but with actual trumpet for the second line and Adrian instead of the counter tenor. This is the first time we're all practicing this piece together. The early music ensemble and Adrian. All the bands usually have rehearsal after school on a Thursday and the choir, which Adrian's in, has rehearsals on a Thursday. Forgetful. Today is Wednesday. When we were little, that was obviously the widowed sea king. Once, Anna had discovered that if you say sea king several times in a row, it sounds like sea king. Sea king, sea king, sea king, sea king, sea king, sea king, sea king. We used to think we were so funny jumping around the living room and saying, the sea king is sinking, 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 the sea king is sinking. Until dad exploded at us. It doesn't really happen that often, just sometimes when we're really annoying, or I don't do the dishes and Anna forgets to do them for me. They used to be scary when we were little, but the worst you'd ever do was slam some cupboards and shout for a bit, and very occasionally throw our stuff out the windows. But then you get all upset and embarrassed that he had overreacted, and usually sorry. I do too, and I don't really find it funny at all anymore. And I don't think Anna does either. Dad and I can be really loud, and Anna's pretty quiet, apart from when she plays the trumpet. She says she's so good at it, because every time Dad or I go ballistic, she goes to her room to have a practice to block out the noise. No control over their emotions. We were supposed to have started five minutes ago. She's forgotten. 
That's just crap, though. Anna's good at the trumpet because she's good at everything. You just need to try harder. The look he's giving me right now. And because she's in love with our teacher, Mr. Sebastian. Oh no. Chaotic. It's all my fault, apparently. I tell Mr. Sebastian that Adrian has responded to my text saying that she's at home and she's sorry. And I make, I say all these excuses like I always do, saying how she has a tendency to forget things sometimes. And he asks, well, why didn't you remind her then? This stupid, stupid project. I say, normally I would, but I didn't this time. He doesn't ask why. Careless. We practice anyway. I lose count of how many mistakes I make, but I don't look at Mr. Sebastian to see if he's looking at me. When we finish, he doesn't even tell me to do better next time. Maybe he thinks this is as good as I'm going to get. Are you happy now? Are you fucking happy? No. This was important. The concert is Saturday. We literally had today and the rehearsal on the day, and that's it. You can't just miss it. I know, but you usually remind me. I shouldn't have to. You're nearly 15, and I'm not your personal assistant. I know. Or your mother. Maybe you shouldn't let me get away with it then. Don't just remind me of stuff or do the dishes or help me with homework. What? You treat me like I can't do anything right. I do not. Yes, you do. You all do. Or girls. What's all this yelling about? Adrian, how many times in the past week have I told you to clean your room? And those dishes downstairs, are they meant to do themselves? Just once, once, I would like to come home and not be immediately immersed in fucking chaos. Good luck with that. What did you say? I'm going to go. No, you're not. You're going to stay right there. We're going to sort this out like fucking adults. And you are going to clean this room, and then you are going to take care of the dishes. It's not my turn, and I'm not a fucking adult. Excuse me? You're the adult, and it's Adrian's turn to do the dishes. And you can't help her out just this once? She doesn't need my help. I'll do it. Like you'll feed your fish, or clean your room, or stick to commitments? Christ, enough! Fine, Adrian! You take care of the dishes. Thank you, Adrian. Now, which one of you is going to tell me what all this arguing is about? I think there's something wrong with my brain. Eh? Oh, wow. I've been doing some research and stuff, and seriously? You know, I find it hard to concentrate, and I forget things sometimes. So, because you forget to feed the fishes, you think you have a brain tumor? Is that it? No, not a brain tumor, but ADHD, maybe. So, you missed rehearsal because you have ADHD? Nice. She doesn't have ADHD. You missed rehearsal? Why? I just said. I forgot. And you didn't think to remind her? She was probably too busy putting lipstick on for her lover, Mr. Sebastian. Fuck you, Adrian. Jesus Christ, enough girls. Anna, go to your room. We'll discuss this later. You don't have ADHD. Can I get tested, at least, or whatever? And then what? I don't know. Maybe things can get easier. Easier how? Adrian, ADHD doesn't have a cure. So what if some psychologist who just hands out letter combinations left and right tells you that you have an ADHD and gives you a bunch of mind-numbing pills? You still have to do all the work. If you want to do better in school or pull me away at home, you just have to do it. 
You don't need a fucking diagnosis on your brain following you around your entire life. You just need to try harder. Try harder? Try harder? All I do is try harder. But every time I try, it just... Ah! Calm down! <laughs> Fuck. Listen, just sort out your room. I'll take care of the dishes. So, Adrian has Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Thinks she has. Isn't that hereditary? Sorry. What? Because you definitely have it. Huh? Uh, the general explanation for children with ADHD back then was just that they were a bit naughty. Oh, done our research, have we, Mother? There's a simple explanation for everything. You scraped by in school because you were understimulated. Well, that was my excuse. According to your teachers, you were just lazy. You were bouncing off the walls and couldn't sit still because you were a physically active boy with an intrinsic need to keep moving. But you were charming and kind when you weren't furious about something. We knew you would do okay in life, on the whole. Everyone seems plenty worried that Adrian won't do okay in life. As women, sometimes we're not given the same chances. But Adrian doesn't bounce off the wall, so... I know. But you see, apparently with girls... The hyperactivity it... isn't as common as it is in boys. Oh, so I'm not the only one who's been doing my research. Of course not. I've been on the chat forums, I've watched all those buttery podcasts about how ADHD is a superpower, and I know plenty of people who went through life with ADHD, including Albert Einstein. Lo and behold, because that is a realistic role model to hold yourself up to. So, I... Tell me, do you think Albert F. E. Einstein's parents got conspiratory emails from the We're Just Here to Help Peachy Parenting Club? about how to collectively group together because we just have to deal with the ADHD kid who keeps on disrupting our other kids' education. Do you think Albert Einstein's parents had to deal with the looks of concern that they would get at the freaking pickup and drop-off? Do you get that with Adrian? Do you remember Anna's friend, Philip? Oh, yes, her little friend. He was sweet. <laughs> and he had an ADHD diagnosis the way people would look at his future of failure. And don't think that I don't know that you used to get that. And I'm the self-fulfilling prophecy going from job to job because I don't have the drive or the patience to fucking build a career. Do you honestly think that I haven't been listening to Adrian as she describes what's going on and listening to her fucking teachers tell me and her about fucking intensive distress and lack of focus that and distraction there? Do you think at any point in all these conversations I haven't drawn a conclusion or a comparison to myself? I may be useless, but I'm not a fucking idiot! I never said you were either. Children are my greatest accomplishments. Tristan, maybe a diagnosis would make things easier, not only for Adrian, but for you too. And 
Diana. I just don't want to be the one to screw them up. I don't want Adrian or Anna for that matter. I'm less concerned about her. I don't want her to look up to me and think that this is the best that she can get. Just you sound like a self-pitying idiot. What? So what? You've had more jobs than the average person. What arm? Portfolio careers are trendy. Nobody takes a job these days and expects to stay there for 40 years like they used to. You have a lovely house and you raise these wonderful kids basically on your own. Oh yes, there were times when I stepped in to help, but when were you ever without employment or enough freelance work to pay the bills or put food on the table? Yes, of course, you may have missed an occasional bill, but, but that's because you forgot Thanks, to... Mother. I get the idea. Right. I think I'll take a rain check on dinner and see you Saturday for the girls' concert. Oh, Tristan, I wouldn't necessarily not be worried about Anna. You probably don't have ADHD at all. Daddy's right. He knows best. They would have caught it by now. There is nothing wrong with you. Actually, there's plenty wrong with you because if you go and get diagnosed, They'll say you have an entirely neurotypical brain. There are no excuses. It would mean that I'm just shit at life. That's not. You okay? She hates you. They all hate you. You mess everything up with everybody. As you do. When I was your age, I had a massive crush on my English teacher. <laughs> he even got me to write a few good essays, you know? Dad, I don't have a crush on Mr. Sebastian. You could hear Daddy coming up the stairs. But he didn't come to your room. He went to the one that actually functions. I'm just saying, it's completely normal to have these feelings, and under, uh, under no circumstances can you act on this. And if in any way he takes advantage of it, He it's just... wouldn't. He hasn't, he wouldn't, and he's not remotely interested. I'm not either, or, I mean, it's not like I'd want anything to happen. Mr. Sebastian just... Yeah? He doesn't take my best for granted. Is that the best you can do? Really? Didn't take you long, did it? You might as well just give up. Also, what's for dinner? I'm sorry for, well, you know. It's okay. You suck! That wasn't even 20 seconds. What are you doing with your life? Maybe you should just forget how to breathe. Dad? Yeah? Are you gonna let Adrian see a doctor? Oh, Anna. Do you remember my friend Phil from first grade who moved away? Yeah. I also remember when he wasn't your friend. He used to torture you. You know he had ADHD? Yeah. I know. His dad explained it to me once when I was over playing at their house and he got angry. I don't even remember what he freaked out about, but I remember Mr. Becker talking and explaining a bit about why he reacted the way he did and that they were working on it together. Adrian is not a seven-year-old hyperactive boy. Yeah, well, neither are you.
It's okay. You're okay. What if you're right, though? What if I'm just shit at life? And, and if you are, well, so am I. And my life is pretty great. I think everything's gonna be okay. <clears throat> the sea bitches are riptides. They may not be gentle waves helping to keep you afloat, but they can take you to places where you may not have dared to go otherwise. Sometimes it's places you don't wanna go, places of anger and frustration and saying things you didn't mean to. Places that are hard to come back from. The riptides can sweep you off your feet, out of nowhere, and sort of your safe ocean in a second. They can make you go from 1% mad to 95% mad in a second. But they keep you moving. They can bring you into beautiful depth where it's just you and what you were doing in that moment. They can have your brain processing several parallel things at once. It can let you burst out ideas and thoughts at a million miles per minute. And once you realize that they are part of you and not against you, you can take some control over whether you get swept away by them. You might even be able to change your direction. But taming a stormy ocean is really hard and sometimes not possible. But I could find out what happens before the riptides. I don't know everything yet. I'm only a mermaid, but that's okay. I have help. And my brain gets swept away by the riptide. All my thoughts are lost or by the riptide. Oh, sometimes in the pain went through. Maybe they'll find a way to. Time to be the fish. I'm always really intrigued by societal norms and expectations, particularly gendered bias on people who grow up as young girls. So the concept for Riptides grew out of um, this amazing list that I received from uh, the WNCC students of topics that they would be 
interested in having explored in this new work. The idea of exploring ADHD alongside mermaids was just kind of the, the thing that opened this world. Um, I didn't have no idea what ADHD was until I was in Riptides and I read the script several times and I came to rehearsal and I, playing a sea bitch, being the representation of ADHD, it really opened my eyes and um, I have somewhat of an understanding of it, not completely. It's very important to do shows like Riptides because um, proper representation of ADHD, especially in young women, is not very prominent, I think. Everyone associates it and stereotypes it in ways that a lot of young women don't get ADHD symptoms. So aware awareness is very important. It's like awareness and it gets you more information than you already knew. Um, I think that it emphasizes the fact that um, ADHD is underdiagnosed and um, a lot of people like have a lot of shame with it. Every single view in the life of any child with ADHD and the people around them could be affected by this. It's important to help the audience understand uh, certain concepts or problems that may be like, like past surface level of understanding. I think we absolutely need new work. We need to continue to be exposed to new work and we need to continue to make new work. People need to hear the story. It was a little nerve-wracking, to be honest with you. It was kind of challenging. As someone who has ADHD, it was very important to see the whole thing done, really. But um, a specific part would have been the teacher scene. Um, it was very interesting to see a teacher be clinical about it and be informed about it in a way that uh, my teachers weren't. If I had been, if it had been caught for me much younger, I would have had an easier schooling life. So it was very close to home for me. I learned a lot from this production, especially watching my other co-actors, like uh, watching Ellie play Adrian and her performance. Uh, it's, it's a really challenging thing that people have to go through. So just to get an understanding of it and um, if somebody feels like they have ADHD from watching the production and it could help them in any way find help, I think that the production will serve that purpose in a good way. Um, I think it's just a really bold and brave choice by WNCC and Francesca as well to um, decide to give this kind of opportunity both to the students but also to me as um, a young woman writer. It's just something that's actually quite easy to do and there are a lot of um, voices and there are a lot of writers and we are all hungry to tell new stories and we are all very hungry to see these new stories on stage. So put them there. Um, with Tristan, he is, he has ADHD, but he never really went to a doctor for it. And I feel a connection to that because as, as someone with ADHD myself, I, uh, I did have a time where I took medicine for it, but then I decided that was not good for me and I uh, feel the connection to him because it's like, I feel his struggles with, like mentally at times because sometimes he can get lost in things or sometimes he feels like he is not living up to what he should be as a father because of his, uh, what is it, his mental state. but. In the end, he's able to power through it, and I feel that is uh, that was an important thing to like. Also, see is that even when at time, even if at times you might not be the best at what you are, you could still be good. Like how he's not the best father, but at times he, when he gets the job done, he is a good father still in the end. And that's kind of makes it makes me feel better about my future. Hi, my name is Carolyn McBurney, and I had the inordinate privilege of working on this world premiere of Riptides. 
I love original scripts, and this was a joy to work on. I commend the playwright, Therese Ramstedt, for her sensitive and honest treatment of the subject of ADHD. Working with Francesca was life-affirming for myself and, and for the cast, <laughs> and that cast. Being a newcomer and of a different generation, this cast of young performers was welcoming and generous and honest and, and open. All of the best things that theater brings people together to do. We explored, we cried, we laughed, and questioned together and overcame so many things that the, that the world is throwing at us right now to put together this beautiful story. Thank you, WNCC, for letting me swim alongside you for Riptides. I really, really want to commend and above all thank WNCC for, and particularly Francesca, of course, for um, being so bold as to commission a new piece of work and focus on original work, um, particularly in the times that we're going through. Um, but I think it is so, there is so much work. There is a wealth of, um, of amazing pieces of writing, obviously, through history. Um, but it's just crucial, I think, that we create new work, especially for the people who are going to be the theatre makers of the future. Um, and to be exposed to original work as a student that you've also had, um, that you've also played a part in, in developing. I, I hope that it's been really exciting and I hope it's been rewarding. Um, I, I think it's certainly something that I would have really loved um, as, a, as a drama student. Um, and yes, I really hope that um, this kind of canvas that I've created has been something that you have enjoyed um, painting on and putting your own spin on. And I really cannot wait to see the result.